My dear friends, today is the 26th Sunday after Pentecost, which will be the text of the 6th Sunday after the Epiphany. My dear friends, the whole church believes in one creed. We have the Athanasian, the Nicene, and the Apostles' Creed, but they're all the same creed. It is a long line to trace the lineage back to the apostles, and that the true church must do. It is much easier to be united to Rome, her doctrines, and her pontiffs. And if we are united, we are Roman Catholics. We're Catholics. Once the church has received the preaching of Christ, she guarded it diligently, and she spread it across the world as if every nation were its own home. Universal is her belief. Universal is her teaching as if it is spoken by one mouth. Even though there are many languages in the world, the force of tradition, which you guard so zealously, remains one. The sun rises in the east, sets in the west. It gives light to everyone across the world. And so the greatest preacher teaches no differently than the simplest preacher. The doctrine taught in Dublin, Ireland, in Budapest, Hungary, in Queensland, Austria, and in Cincinnati are all the same. We see many different cultures here, but we see the same faith. St. Peter and St. Paul, the two great apostles, poured into the Catholic Church their total selves. And all wishing to drink of their doctrines, their works, and their sacrifices, go to Peter and receive life. Saints Peter and Paul will give us a fervent love for all that is Catholic. For their church, the Catholic Church, is the gateway to life. It's the gateway to eternal life. According to St. Augustine, in the Catholic Church is their peace which no other church can provide. Peace cannot take root in a land of uncertainty where there is ambiguous teaching, where nothing is clear. We all like bargain prices. We try to visit the stores when they have sales. When we see what we can purchase for a few dollars, we're happy. We as Catholics are proud to have Christ on the cross. The Protestants are not. What is he doing on that cross but looking to buy something? And what is it that he's about to buy but your salvation? And the currency, my dear friends, is not metal from the ground or paper we print on. The currency is his own blood. The Lord will claim for his own a generation that will be loyal to his church, to his pontiffs, to Saints Peter and Paul. The church is the spouse of our Lord Jesus Christ. The flock of Christ is universal, not in number, but universal in available membership. For as the apostles were commanded by our Lord himself to preach the gospel to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem, 
but ending at the four corners of the world. And so it has and is being preached to the four corners of the world. There will always be shepherds who abandon their flock to their own destruction. But the same divine shepherd is there guiding the bark of Peter. Scripture tells us, the pontiffs tell us, St. Robert Ben Bellarmine tell us, that someday all nations will glory in the fact that they are the descendants of Abraham. I mean, spiritually, the children of God. God will give to them, those who do not possess now, the Messiah, and all nations of the world will receive an inheritance from God. All someday will bow down to him, including the kings who now oppose him. A flock so extensive as the Catholic Church cannot pass our notice. All the ends of the earth one day will see the victory of our God. The Catholic Church is spread over the whole world. She is that huge city on a mountain that cannot but be noticed. We have the privilege, most of us, many of us, of being born into the Catholic faith. We have for many years studied her wisdom, and it gives us consolation to know that we can easily remain safe within her folds. St. Augustine says, besides her wisdom, I still find many reasons to remain Catholic. The common assent of the nations, the hope she gives to her children, the charity of her laws and her subjects, and the apostolic succession begun by our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Augustine marvels, and he was very bright, at these most powerful motives, as do those of lesser intelligence marvel as well, as they study the wisdom of the church. St. Augustine says, Concerning the wisdom of the church, for myself, I would not even believe in the gospel itself unless it were taught to me by the authority of the Holy Catholic Church. Seventy years after the establishment of the first Christian church and community in Antioch, it had become a menace, the church in Antioch, to the pagan religions, such that the emperor Decius proclaimed, I would prefer a rival to my crown rather than one Christian bishop from Antioch. And so, my dear friends, you and I must be that menace today to pagan teachings, to the pagan religions and beliefs that are flooding our society today. Let us be that menace to the modern-day Decius. God love you and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.